Hey everybody, welcome back to Linux Cast. I'm your host, Matt. And I'm Tyler. Holy crap, we're back. It's 2022. Uh, we added a whole year that went around the sun. You know, I mm-hmm. think that's how it works. We, I mean, we were talking about physics before, I'm sure, that I learned that yeah. sometime in university. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I have a feeling that this podcast might end up being educational. Probably, somewhat. Probably not. <laughs> Probably not, but you know, we can we can convince don't, ourselves. Don't, don't set your expectations too high because by the end of it you're just bound to be disappointed. <laughs> exactly. You know, right. expectations are bad. Just don't set them, all right? <laughs> Either that or set them so low. So, so like all right, story time. Um <laughs> we're thirty seconds in. Tangent. Hello, something shiny. <laughs> Anyways, uh like I like sports, but I can't like and I like to watch like football and basketball and stuff like that, but mm-hmm. I never have the expectation that my team is going to win. Like I always think that they're going to lose, like guaranteed. And I've set myself up like this since like the year 2000, because in the year 2000, Michigan State went to the national championship and they lost to Florida by six points. And at that point, I was like 15 years old, right? And I'd just gotten into sports and I was not used to my team losing because they'd done so well. It was like the first year I actually followed sports. I was so, I was just sad and, uh, very disappointed and stuff like that. Like, but since that point, I've just talked myself into believing that every time my team plays, they're gonna lose. Not only they're gonna lose, but they're gonna lose bad. Like they're gonna get their asses blown out. That way, every time they win, super surprised. You know, and it, it just works out that way. If they lose, I'm not disappointed at all because I expected it. You know, it works. Uh, it keeps my blood pressure, you know, low during games and stuff like that. Because that doesn't matter to me if they play like crap. Because I already knew that they were going to play like crap. It's what I expected to happen. <laughs> See, I mean, that's like, I mean, that's a really good way of protecting yourself. But also at the same time, I feel like if you, if any of the players from your team were to hear this, they'd be like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, he has like, no faith in us at all exactly <laughs> like the only reason he enjoys watching us is because he's already okay with us just losing well you gotta remember, there was a period where the msu football team was just god awful like right after nick saban left and um we went through a series of coaches like john l smith he was okay so there was this game we were playing notre dame and michigan state i shit you not Led forty to thirteen. I was at work. I worked at Kroger at the time. Like, 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 uh, it was like a late game. It was like a like a night game, and they were leading forty to thirteen. And one of my coworkers <laughs> said this, and I quote his exact word: "He is there's no way Michigan State's going to lose this game." And I was like, "Yeah, there is." And guess <laughs> they lost forty-two to forty. <laughs> oh my <laughs> like, god! Oh my god! It was so bad. Uh, it was just not <laughs> like, like I wasn't disappointed because I expected it. And oh, he, you should have seen his Dude, face. Could you just imagine the other team? Like the other team coming back home was like, dude, there was like the coach had to be ecstatic because he's like, there's no way we came back from that. Like that, that was an unbelievable comeback. Yeah, that, that spelled the end of John L. Smith. By the way, that was <laughs> he never he never coached again. <laughs> I'll I'll nod my head like I like I know and am familiar with his coach. Yes, yeah, he was done for. Yeah. <laughs> well, all right, we, we should probably not talk about sports. <laughs> well, we can't we can't talk about Linux because douchebag over there is using Windows. I mean, <laughs> hey, hey, now, all right. Look, I, I I may be using Windows, but I am developing an open source game. So like that's something. This isn't the Something. Open, open source cast. This is the, I know the it's Linux not. Cast. I you know. know. Jesus. <laughs> 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 All right. So uh, I don't even know why I bother asking this question. Tyler, what have you been doing in Linux the last couple weeks? Bouncing around trying a whole bunch of different distros on this Ventoy drive. Um, got about I don't even know how many on here, dog. Like definitely, definitely 12 plus Linux distros on here. Um, all of them have various issues. Uh, on just so everyone knows, I have an RX 6600 XT and a 1440p 165 hertz monitor. So the screen setup and stuff is a little weird, but um, yeah, uh, Ubuntu has a weird pink hue, hue over the entire screen. That's fun. Um, 
every single Linux distro I've tried has issues. Fedora is the closest one to perfect, but on every Linux distro, my 4K webcam flashes green in Discord and some other programs periodically. Discord is egregious, though. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I've been doing in Linux here recently. I'm just mm. bouncing around. And then, and then he said, I'm done with this. I'm using Windows 11. Mm-hmm. That was the now solution. the only distro that I haven't tried yet because I'm trying to like I've I've been waiting for today to try it out because I feel like I I have to is Arco. I want to wear the Arco T-shirt as I install no. Arco because I need Arco to work. Okay, oh, I need be Arco to just so cool if it worked. That'd exactly. Awesome. All right. Here's the thing, though, Tyler. If you use it and it has like a problem or something, don't just automatically ha- dive away from it. Go into the the Telegram channel and ask to what's going on. See if somebody can help you solve it, because their their community is so good. Um, the thing that the thing that I have that's a it's a major problem with. I, I don't think it'll be a problem as long as I'm using a desktop environment like KDE or GNOME, but I have a big issue like i have to manually configure xorg if i'm outside of a desktop environment and manually configuring an xorg to get 165 hertz and everything working is it's a pain in the ass to do manually um i've done it i mean gotten it to work monitor can support other refresh rates though right yeah but why the fuck would i i've got 165 hertz why would i run it at 60 hertz so i would like to recall your uh attention to the beginning of our conversation where i told you to not set expectations <laughs> maybe lower those expectations just a tad and you'll be able to well, more, more the, the thing is is like I, it's not really an expectation it's just so before this year before i got all this stuff i was i was using windows 10 to work in unreal messing around in unreal quite quite a bit and still am um to an extent uh so I've been in Windows. So like now that I had this hardware, I tried it I, because I was on Windows. I installed Windows. I know how everything should work. And you got the fact that it's not really spoiled. It's just I know how shit should work. Like 165 hertz like, should work. I, I would tell you, go down to 144. You'll probably have a better, cha- a better chance of getting stuff to work. Well, n- no, because the I have to if I'm outside of a desktop environment, I have to manually go into XOR to configure the refresh rate properly. Because um, X render, I have to manually run an X render command every time. Don't ask me why. It just X render running it with like DWM for some reason causes issues if I don't do it manually inside of DWM. Even don't know if why. You put it in the it auto sh- start file. Even if I do it there, it has issue. I it it will like it sets the re- the monitors correctly, but half of the screen is unusable, like it's just a black yeah, portion of the screen. If you end up trying Arco and that same thing happens, ask them because they have a DWM spin. Mm-hmm. So they're used to supporting DWM. Now, I mean, chances are if there, if it, if it's a problem that they've experienced before, they've probably made a video and they'll probably point you towards a video on their YouTube channel. But if it's not a problem that they've covered before, they'll probably help. I mean, if there's a solution. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, the thing is, is like I can get this stuff to work. Like I can get 165 hertz to work in different Linux distros. The thing where it starts to really fall apart is the webcam is like a major pain in the yeah, ass. I don't think that We're, webcam is going to be fixed, bro. It's just that's just a yeah, problem. You're just exactly. You're just going to have to deal with it. That's what I. That's what I've been doing. I mean, granted, this 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 so far, I haven't seen mine do it at all. But mine never does it every once in a while. And it's a stupid. It's stupid because it's a different brand. Uh, Analytic Minded said you can also ask the people in the Arch forums. They're really friendly people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I actually that's that's funny that he says that because I actually did. That was one like that was one of my few times where I actually reached out to the Arch community for help was configuring that and figuring out what was wrong with XOR or XRander. And I had an argument with somebody who told me that I was lying about the way that XRander was working. Like I I was lying because <laughs> there was no way that it wasn't working. Like it. It's not working. I'm sorry. Oh, those, those lovely arch people. You can't live with them. You can't live without them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Buddy, what you doing back there, bro? <laughs> oh, he's just itching right now. Getting that <laughs> I good scratch. Face. All right. Anyways, um, so for me, I have been, I started my brand new long-term review of MX Linux, 
and I'm really liking it. Like, it's really good, and I've gone through and set up a lot of stuff. I will say that the software availability is not as good as I'd hoped it would be, um, but it, the main stuff is there. Weird thing is, is like Discord is not there, so you have to use the flat pack, and the flat pack is really old. Like the flat, or at least it feels really old because it still has the bug where when you get a notification, it freezes for like five minutes, and then the notification Boom. will come up and it'll work fine until you get another notification. Yeah, because as far as I know, like I was talking with TFL, and I f I feel like that problem got fixed like a week or so ago, like well, a week it, or two it, weeks ago. It's been fixed for a while, like in the 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 Arch version, but it's not fixed in the Flatpak version. So that's been a pain in the butt. That's the reason why I'm on Arco today because I didn't want Discord to freak out. If I get a notification while we're recording and it just decides to freeze for five minutes, that just pissed me off. Yeah. Um, so that's that's the reason why I'm on Arco today. But um, uh, the software availability stuff has been mostly good, but there's been some things like Clip Menu D. You had to, I had to build it. Uh, Uberzug had to build that from scratch. I had to build um, like Rofi Emoji from scratch, the Rofi Power Menu from scratch. The problem is the Rofi Power Menu thing doesn't work in MX Linux because it rely, relies on System D, and MX Linux doesn't use System D. It uses yeah. uh, SysV init or whatever else it's called. Um, so I've been having problems with that too. Um, so those are going to be my two interesting things because there's been a lot of the, that little stuff that you have to use in order to get like window managers to do good. Um, just isn't in any of the repositories because it's Debian. So yeah. um, mm -hmm. that has been that's about been about my only negative experience. Other than that, it's been really good. Um, uh, what uh, I don't think I could switch to it though, because a lot of the stuff I use requires System D. Like like it just required it. It was built for System D, <laughs> and getting it to not you know. To work with another a different init system just you know is not and i mean if you switched away from arco like why the hell are we selling these t-shirts like come on now oh right. I, this arco install is staying here forever you don't have to worry about that there's, exactly, another, exactly. there's another hard drive for the other uh, other more <laughs> inferior distros you know <laughs> <coughs> lovely all right anyways so that is it uh for that section there uh now it's time for the the lovely part which is the contact information which is going to be way harder when I haven't done it in two weeks like I had pr practice there we had like a little bit of a, of a streak going for, for episodes and it was getting pretty good there towards the end now I haven't done it for two weeks and um, yeah this is going to be uh, brutal mm -hmm. alright I had to get it I had to I had to get my fuel in water alright I mean you gotta stay hydrated alright all right. All right, I'm I'm hyping myself up. See if I can get through there. All right, anyway, I'm gonna sit back here. I'm gonna sit back here. This is gonna be a successful read. I'm gonna be quiet. Get away from the mic. <laughs> if you want to get in contact with us, you can do so. You can follow us on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can subscribe to all of our stuff at the LinuxCast.org. Now, before the break, I showed a picture of a website, and I promised that by the time we came back, you'd be online. I I didn't fulfill that promise. <laughs> what? Uh, what? <laughs> uh, it's ready to go. Like it's <laughs> the, the website is ready to go. It just needs to be uploaded to a server someplace, and I haven't done that yet. I was hoping to do it like this weekend. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But it exists. It, it does exist. Like the 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 website is done. Like the HTML files and CSS files are all ready to go. Anyways, uh, you can contact us via email, email at the linuxcast.org. You can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. You can support Tyler, who has his channel on uh, YouTube and Odyssey. You can subscribe to his YouTube channel, youtube.com slash zanyog. Is that mm -hmm. right? Oh, I remembered yep. that. I should write that down somewhere. You can also subscribe. You can also join the Discord forum or Discord forum, the Discord server. Good Lord, Matt. Uh, I made it almost all the way through before my, my foot got in my mouth. Anyways, the Discord server, the link for that will be in the video description. We also have a Telegram group, uh, which uh, there's like four members of, I think. Uh, <laughs> I didn't even know we had a Telegram group. There, it's, been okay. there for, it's been there for a while. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've been the only one that put anything in it. And uh, 
So it's just me talking to myself as usual. Anyways, you can also subscribe to the Linux Cast on YouTube at youtube.com slash Linux Cast. We are about 350 subscribers away from 8,000, which is um, still astonishing to me. I mean, it's just absolutely astonishing. Um, like, and, and DT's getting like, he's like 40,000 away from 200,000, which is like, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's insane, right? Anyways. Yeah. Um, so that's the contact information. It wasn't as bad as it could have been. Um, yeah. No, that was actually a solid read, you know? Um, like, what, I, what I need to do is sit down, record it perfectly, like just, and then we'll just drop it in every week. Yeah. <laughs> I'll never well, have to read it again. That's exactly what you need to do. You need to watch that video that Brody put out and, and like on just making like an OBS scene, like a, like a, just a capture. And then you just drop, like you just switch everything and you just let yourself read it from like two weeks ago yeah. forever, forever and ever. <laughs> exactly. Good, good problem. All right. So, normally, this is where we talk about the news, but it's the first episode of the year, so what we're going to do instead is talk about uh, predictions for 2022 in Linux. Now, buddy, what's the matter, buddy? We hear you. (laughs) Buddy's part of the podcast. (laughs) I mean, he's got to be. We should have a bingo, and one of the spots is Buddy joins the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> another one would be matt flubs his way through the contact information that'll be a that'll be a gimme uh, <laughs> that'll just be the middle spot like where you always start off there you go that's just a given one will be bitching about mozilla the other one another bitching about gnome uh another one uh tyler's using windows <laughs> <laughs> uh, we should definitely do that. We should have that. Thing Dude, of, yes, uh, for the for the live audience, it'd be great. All right. Anyways, uh, anyways, um, we're doing predictions. That's the point. We we're. I was gonna go with that. Um, so we've uh, each done three predictions, and we're gonna go through them one at a time. We'll go back and forth. So Tyler, your first prediction. Okay, my prediction is that this year will finally be the year that everybody will stop talking about Matrix and just talk about Element and like it'll actually start competing really with Discord. I think this is the year that they're finally going to implement the grid mode, which will be nice, like very nice, because that's literally the only thing. If you go in and use Element, it is straight up, just Discord, slightly different naming scheme. The UI looks marginally different. The Ran- only thing that it's... Random dialer there for some reason. I mean, I think that's been removed because the last time I went in there, I didn't see it. Um, that being said, I could have just not been paying attention for it. Um, but they have... The only thing that they are missing to where it could be used as a drop-in Discord replacement and be... Ch- very competitive is a grid mode. Just add that button to where everybody's videos is not overlaid. That that solves all the problems. Just make a grid mode. Um, I think this year is when they're going to implement that feature and we're going to get people that just finally understand marketing and stop talking about fucking Matrix. That's only confusing. But isn't Don't el- bring it up. Doesn't Element use Matrix? Yes, but who the fuck cares? No one cares. Like, I don't want to know what Discord is using on the back end. Why would you even tell me? Why would you even talk about so it? If that, What's WebRTC? Yeah. Who cares? If that like, if that grid mode gets implemented, are we going to use that to record the podcast? Hell yeah. I don't, I don't see why we wouldn't. I mean, at that point, it's literally Discord. I mean, it's the same thing. It's just open source. We're, we're going to have to learn how to create a bridge. Because if we can create a bridge between that... Because I've been asked several times... Look, I got that message too. I'm not bridging over my Discord. That's stupid. Uh, literally, Element is a drop-in replacement for Discord. All it needs is one the one tiny missing feature that every content creator needs so that they can move over there. And it's a simple fix. Just yeah, implement it and I'm everyone so will move over. I'm going to totally disagree with you so hard right now. Because what the really? hell? Yeah, because... All right. 
There's one thing that is missing with Element. It's not a grid mode. Like, that's a feature that can be easily added. The one thing exactly. that is missing with Element is people. Like, nobody yes. fucking uses Element. Why? Because nobody knows what the hell Element... Ask, well, go into the go into a random non Linux Discord server and ask them what element is and be like, what? Nobody's gonna know. Yeah. Like, I'm, and okay, other than OBS and like, I don't know, Blender or something. Name another open source project that is Hold mainstream. On. You're has, technically right, but here's my argument against that. Do you know what Gutter is? No. Exactly. No one knows what Gutter is, except for the fact that people are getting banned off of Twitter and Joe Rogan just switched over to it. And literally overnight, 500 million people joined it. Here's my argument on, on the All reason right, well, why no hold, one hold, knows hold on about me. I, I will go. I'll call Joe Rogan. I got him on, on speed dial and see if he can join Dude. Element to see if he'll pick well, up. No, I mean, but see, that's my point, though. Like, that's my whole point is no one knows about these things until content creators or people that actually talk about them and make them relevant use them use them content creators can't use element because it 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 doesn't have the things necessary uh, to do a podcast yeah all right i i'm i'm gonna come out and say this right now that you're gonna be wrong on this prediction <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's not that i don't want element to be good or to be used i just it's the chicken egg problem, right? You can't. Nobody's gonna go to Element unless there's. T that's where the friends are. That's the reason why Facebook is so big and continues to be so big, is because that's where everybody is. Like, and yeah, they they've been losing, you know, random people, and the, you know, growth is slowed. But I mean, two billion people are still there, and you, for the most part, if you want to get in contact with family, that's still probably the best way to do it if they live in like California or something, you know, you know. If you want to see their baby pictures, you go to fucking Facebook. You don't go to Element. You know, you know, what I'm saying it's the, yeah. the the social the social aspect of social media requires people to use it. And I don't mm -hmm. I don't think that in this day and age But what brings people to social platforms? Nobody knows. The big the No, yes, everybody No, <laughs> yes, people do know. It's the big people. But, but like the, the popular people. The if the popular people use the social network, the then people will come. Chances of that happening for Element though would be so astonishingly Well, here's the thing. Discord has major problems. Everyone knows that. It, Everyone it, talks it, about it. It's hilarious because one of my predictions might feed into yours. Like, the, if, if one of my predictions happens, yours might actually happen. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> <All right. laughs> but yeah. Okay. Um, you go on. We'll, we'll, we'll just hope and pray Joe Rogan saves Element. That's just. <laughs> I mean, I don't think it'll be Joe Rogan, but I definitely think once creators can actually use it, uh, 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 then it'll be competitive. <laughs> like, uh, it'd be interesting. We, we could make bets on who, who it could possibly be. Like, uh, um, um, Matt Damon or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 um, I mean, like, that's the thing. I don't think we need, like, we don't need, like, the, those types of big names for it to be really what everyone's using. If just the actual, like, interesting people on YouTube are using it. That's what matters. Well, I mean, and I most know. YouTubers want something other than Discord. So, I mean, do I mean do they? Because if if if, yeah. if, if if they really did want something other than you didn't Discord, wouldn't they just use Element? Well, but that's the problem, though. It, like uh, most content creators do podcasts. Podcasts are huge uh -huh. now, right. and you can't do a podcast from Element. That's the right. biggest problem. I guess. I guess we'll see. All right. All right. So, my first one. I mean, to is that Solus will fold. So Solus Linux is um was started by Ike uh, Daughtry. I don't know how his, how you say his last name. Um, ages and ages ago, right? And he's he's left the project, and now their co manager, their co uh, uh their co lead has left the project and taken Budgie with him. Like he's mm -hmm. he's taking Budgie with him and he's gonna manage that separately, which is probably a good idea. Um, but it seems like every few months there's some kind of major shakeup with the Solus team, and this just feels like the year that Solus will wrap it up and not be a, a, a distro anymore. It'll just die. No. 
because Solus is actually a good distro, but it's always had problems with software availability because they have their own repos and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, um, and, and let's face it, they've been, so this is a more of a budgie problem, but they've been promising budgie 11 now for like, seems like four or five years. Um, and they've changed their minds on what it's going to be forever. Like it, it was going to change to cute. And then they decided to scrap that. They were going to continue on with the GTK and do a rewrite using that. That's been scrapped. Now they're going to use the EFL libraries. Uh, who knows if they're going to continue on with that. I mean, nobody uses the EFL libraries. So, I mean, there, there has to be a reason why the EFL libraries aren't popular. Uh, I don't know what they would be, but it seems like there'd be a reason. if if Because if it was really good, more distros would use it. Or desktop environments would use it. So that's more of a budgie problem, but still... Um, now Solus ha- Solus and Budgie were together, right? They, they, they were created together. They were tied together they heavily. They were literally created by the same people for each other. <laughs> you know? And now they're separate. Um, Budgie has a reason to exist because people like a desktop environment. What is the reason and for Solus to exist? And the answer to that is I have no clue what reason it's there for. Um, yeah. it, it, what does it bring to the table that is going to be, you know, a unique distro? Because most people who want to use a distro, uh, unless they're like uber Linux nerds and want to use something independent like Arctix or whatever, you know, those guys. But I mean, most people, when they just want to use a distro, they're going to use something that's mainstream. That's something that's based on Ubuntu or Debian or Arch or Or that you know has really good support. Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to be some random small distro. I mean, the only way Solus stays afloat is if it's just like a like they just do it for themselves. Like it's not, you know, it's just, it's just a small project that they the developers develop for themselves. Um. So, uh, yeah, I think that this is probably the year that Solus will just not be developed anymore. That's my prediction. It'd be sad, but not surprising. Because Ike's doing something different yeah. called Serpent OS. I like I don't know what it is, but. I haven't been keeping up with with, with what they're doing. Yeah, That's but different. it's 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 unfortunate because like Solus, really, in all honesty, I mean, it's a fantastic distro. Like, yeah, yeah, I mean, yes, there was definitely like you know, they as with any distro, it had its own you know pros and cons, but it was a overall really good distro. Uh, I think it still is. It just it's now it's on even more uh, rocky ground, I guess. Yeah, I guess uh, that's how you put it. It's gonna be. I mean, it's gonna be sad, but if if it does happen, so all right. So your next prediction. Yeah, my next one is the distributions based on Ubuntu uh, will uh, change that because I don't think uh, Ubuntu is really making a lot of decisions that are um, popular with their downstream variants i think a lot more projects are going to be slightly uh shifting away from ubuntu or at the very least just d- not implementing a lot of the changes that new ubuntu and new canonical are making that's kind of my prediction now i don't think that linux mint is going to be based on arch uh, don't please don't misunderstand what I'm saying there. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what Linux Mint needs is a third thing to base themselves off from is the Arch. Then they might as well do one for Slackware and Gen two and and and. Uh, Dude, could you imagine a Linux Mint Slackware edition? Like that needs to happen. Like it, it, that needs to happen. <laughs> why hasn't I mean, it they happened ha- yet? <laughs> Dude, like look, they like wasting development time, so why not? Why not? <laughs> like seriously definitely Linux Mint Gen 2 just addition where instead of being able to install everything everything has to be compiled <laughs> out of the box <laughs> oh it's, that's gotta happen uh, uh, you get the great user interface of the cinnamon desktop but just none of the user friendly aspects of Linux Mint I'd love it so on your under your prediction, I think the th- thing that's gonna s- happen with Ubuntu is not that people are gonna stop using it, but it's there's going to be like a, a a fragmentation in what Ubuntu is. So there's gonna be the Ubuntu 
that everybody uses. And that thing is going to be the snappiest snap thing that ever snapped. Everything is going to be snaps. Uh, everything that they can make a snap is going to be a snap. And that's going to be yeah. Ubuntu. Um, whether or not anybody will use that experience because it takes 12 minutes to load up your browser, I don't know. And see, what you're saying right now is why I'm making my prediction, because I feel like as an actual developer, you would probably want to change when your distro, because it's based off Ubuntu, all of the tutorials on getting shit to work in your distro won't work because they're so much different about your version of Ubuntu than the mainline yeah. Ubuntu. But see, the thing is, is that I think that a lot of developers and distro maintainers are going to do what Linux Mint has done, which is they use Ubuntu... They use the LTS Ubuntu releases, and then they strip out Snap. Like, they just completely take it out. Um, I'm pretty oh. sure Kubuntu does this, right? And that's a, an official I think flavor. So, yeah. so, it really wouldn't surprise me if more Ubuntu-based distros do that. Now, personally, I think at that point, if you're going to take out Snaps, you just might as well base yourself on Debian, because that's basically well, yeah. what you're doing. I mean, yeah, because without- yeah, I mean, most most people just want to get it. If, if you're basing off Ubuntu, you're probably doing it because of ease of use. And if you're ripping out the ease of use factor that like most people who are going to Ubuntu want, where just they don't have to worry about anything. They who cares that it's bloated or whatever? Just it's a snap. It'll work. And the the guides online are going to be just go grab it from the software center or sudo snap install like. All right, Miguel in the the chat asked for a a, a Debian based KDE Neon. I would check out Sparky Linux. Um, um, yeah, it's basically Debian, but with KDE and a really good installer. It's really good. Um, and it use I believe it uses systemd, so you don't have the same problems I've been having with MX, but I might be wrong on there. Um, anyways, uh, definitely Sparky's a really good one. So, um. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what happens with Ubuntu, because my next one actually also has to do with Ubuntu. Uh, so they're switching their uh, installer to a Flutter-based... De- 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 they're designing it in Flutter, which is... Uh, I don't know how... Like a development framework that is, you know, designed and developed by Google and canonical together. And Wait, hold on, hold on. So I'm a troglodyte here. So just explain this to me. So is it like, are you talking like framework is in the same type of ideas like GTK is in a framework? Kind of. Yeah. But I think it's more like a web based okay. framework. I might be wrong about it. Yeah, remember not a developer. So, um, but it's something like that. It's something somewhere along the lines of GTK or Java or something. It's something, it's one of those things. Um, I, I couldn't explain it more than that. It's it, it's a framework. That's the word that I learned. That's as far as I went. Um, I'm with you, a hundred percent. But but anyways, they're developing their installer as this thing. They're also doing a couple other apps in Flutter. I think in 2022 we'll see more and more Ubuntu stuff based with Flutter, also being Snaps. Um, and they're they're gonna continue to this path towards, um, just removing GTK from their version of GNOME. Um, and eventually it just won't be GNOME anymore. It'll be Flutter, whatever, you know, it'll be there. Maybe, 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 cause one thing that's true is that they've gone through and abandoned unity a couple times. Like when, when they were first developing unity, they used unity, then they abandoned the idea. They came back to it and then they made it the default for Ubuntu and then they abandoned it and then they come back to it. And then this last time they abandoned it. So it wouldn't be surprising if they come back to Unity. Now, especially because Unity 10 has been being worked on. And apparently mm-hmm. it's fairly good. Um, so, it'll be... And they really, like, almost, from it, from what I hear from most developers, getting away from GTK is kind of a goal. Because uh, if you're not literally just straight up on the GNOME project, they don't really take what you need or yeah. what you might ask them into consideration. Well, and we, we oh. know that canonical likes to control things. So, yeah. Um, well, and to me, it's, it's really odd that we live in this day and age. Like to me, like when, when I like look back on my like beginnings in Linux, like the perspective that I got from everyone online was that like you went to Ubuntu as your starting place in Linux because you were interested in getting away from like the big tech, horrible licenses, like, like, just that entire, uh, I like m- m- f- mindset and framework, and now 
like canonical is just like the most eager company to like hop into bed with Google and people are still like, yeah, this is the default. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's uh, weird. It, it's very odd that they chose to develop a framework or whatever it is with Google. Um, no. Because, I mean, first of all, Google kills projects all the freaking time. So mm -hmm. who knows if, if canonical is going to be left holding the bag. You know, like in, in, in a year or something, Google decides Flutter's not their new thing and just decides to leave Canonical to do it all by themselves. That would not be surprising because Google's done it before. You know, they, no. they kill shit and all the time. Google is also a data analytics company. So yeah. why would you make a framework with an analytics company? Right. Like, that's kind of n not what you're about. Well, I mean... Google does a ton of stuff that's open source, right? And so, I mean, they, from a like a resource perspective, if you ignore all the evil shit that Google does, which, I mean, it's hard to do, I freely admit that, if you, if you ignore the evil shit, they have a ton of money and a ton of developers so that they can, if you can team up with them and kind of take advantage of those resources, it kind of makes sense, but then you got to remember that they do evil shit. Um, it's like... Yeah. Um, it's like if Voldemort was really, really rich, you know, and you needed yeah. some money. So you, yeah, you get, you asked him for a loan, but he also is going to murder you, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, if you don't pay him back, like you're, you're being abracadabra into it, like another reality. But at the same time, he did give you the money that you needed to start your business. So like, you know, I mean, <laughs> so you just kind of turn a blind eye to the fact that he's, you know, murdering Harry Potter every year, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right it's just it, it's it's weird but i hope i hope i hope we have a bright future where canonical is i don't know changing in a good way for once that'd be nice uh, we can hope <laughs> I, I don't have any hope for that <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 like, I, i'm sure that there are many good people who work at canonical and they've done Literally, without Canonical, Ubuntu would not be where it's at, or Linux would yeah. not be where it's at, right? Like, it just wouldn't be. Um, yeah. Just like if you took Red Hat out of the equation, we would not have the vast majority of the stuff we have. We wouldn't have XOR, we wouldn't have Pulse Audio, we wouldn't have, you know, any number of System D, you know, all this stuff that is absolutely required for Linux to run wouldn't mm -hmm. have existed if Red Hat wasn't making money doing it, because there would have been no incentive for them to do any of that stuff if they weren't able to then put it into their enterprise stuff and make money from it right yeah. so we bitch and bitch about canonical <clears throat> being uh, a corporation that makes money <laughs> i guess um but i mean really it's not the the fact that they make money it's just who it's the fact that they make money with who they choose to make money with yeah <laughs> which well, hey like look if you're gonna play ball you kind of have to like i mean you Look, if, if you're inside of a school, eventually you're going to have to have some dealings with a bully, okay? And a Google is the bully of the corporation space, yeah. so eventually you're going to have to do a little something with them. All right. You know, they're going to have to steal your lunch money somewhere. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just inevitable. Yeah, you know, uh -huh. there's, there's no getting past Voldemort, all right? <laughs> all right. Um, your third and final one. All right. Um... Mine is something that people probably will not like, but it's a honest to God prediction for this year. I think if we get the Steam Deck this year, people are probably going to be running Windows on it. Just throwing that prediction out there. I don't even know if that's surprising to anyone. Um, the 100% game compatibility in Steam is not going to happen. Um, also, from what I've figured out with talking with some developers enabling easy anti-cheat is not as simple as some would make it out to be um it's not just emailing and pressing a button uh it it does require a little bit more than that and can cause problems um yeah it's overall i've just found that most likely gamers will probably i mean if you got an extensive library you want to play everything probably put windows on it which I really hate. That just makes me so sad. I, I mean, know. Uh, you, the thing is, you're probably right. I got it. I hate it. I hate it. It's so bad. 
but I, it's all going to depend, right? It's going to depend on how many games work. If the vast majority of the games that people want to play work in... So, the thing is, when you see articles about the Steam Deck online, and they're talking about, oh, all the games are going to work, hold no. on there, Charlie. Yeah. That was never going to happen. Epic is never going to bring a a a, a native client to Linux. That's just never, never going to happen a, a, unless the Steam Deck is like Switch style popular. Like if they sell millions, hundreds of millions of dollars, hundred millions of uh, of of Steam Decks, that's when uh, Epic might do it. But that's just even then, it, it's man, not going to. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. So. The, the the same thing with like or EA's origin and all these custom launchers, all that stuff, that's gonna have to be in in wine and proton and all that stuff. Lutris, you know, that's the way mm -hmm. it's gonna have to happen. And that stuff has always been the biggest hack that's ever been hacked on Linux, right? It's just yep. the, the way it is. Like, you ever install anything in Lutris? Yes, it's way easier than it used to be. When you try, if you used to try to get something to work in wine, it used to be the the nerdiest thing you ever did. Now it's way cool. easier, but it's still beyond so m most people. Yeah, it, it, or it just sometimes still doesn't work. Right. Like well, th yeah, because things break. Like uh, their la the launcher gets updated, and then the script no longer works. Because basically, all mm -hmm. it's doing is running scripts in the background, right? Yeah. Um, or they update the game, and there's a new DLL that it can't launch. And... Yeah. So that stuff, ev everything outside of Steam, it's always always going to be a crapshoot, right? Mm -hmm. All the success of the Steam Deck is going to highly depend, like a hundred percent depend, on how much Steam does or and Valve mm -hmm. does to get games working. And it doesn't have to be all of them because they have that. I don't know if you remember this, but they went through and decided that they're going to have like a rating system, like how well this game worked on the Steam Deck. That's what they're going to do. And as long as people pay attention to that thing and realize when they're buying games whether or not it's going to work, it's going to be fine. It's going to be the people who have existing game libraries, which is going to be most of them, mm -hmm. that are never going to see that little rating system and just going to install a game and then realize that you have to tweak something in order to get to work or there are other extra steps or something. It, those are going to be the people who are going to say, you want to, this is way more work than it needs to be. I'm installing Windows. Those are going to or be the, the I mean the main problem is is like really a hundred percent game compatibility kind of is necessary like I well, I didn't believe that but here's how the sand so I am working with uh, Scott or Arch Center and Phoenix Python on my Discord we are working right now on making a survival game in Unity uh, that's peer to peer like very small games but it, anyway we're working on a game that's similar to survival games like Dead Side and DayZ because there's not any for Linux and I love those types of games I, I, I'm addicted to them I love them um, and there's not a really good dedicated game for that on Linux I love Dead Side. I'm addicted to Dead Side. I want to play it. It does not run on Linux. And so, like, I, I can... The only chance that I have to play the game is running through GeForce Now. And there's input latency there that makes the game really difficult to play, if not bordering on unplayable. And I... I have a system now that I can pl I can play that game at ultra at 1440p at above 100 fps. That is an amazing experience. I want to be able to have it. And if I have if I have a Steam Deck, I want to carry the game. I want to carry that little console around and play the game. That game has to work on there. And again, that's not a problem with Steam or anything. But that's just kind of backing up my prediction where. Most people will install Windows on it. Milo Hoffman in the chat said something I was thinking of. He says, no, nah, the Sony PSP doesn't have 100% of Windows games. And that's what I was kind of thinking of. was like, well, the, the Steam Deck doesn't really have, have to have 100% because it only has to have uh, games that work on it. Because like the you can play a PlayStation game on the Switch, right? That was the analogy I was thinking of. But it, it, this really doesn't work because... You can buy all the games in Steam. If all the games you can buy in Steam don't work, you're going to have a bad experience because yeah. you're going to... And that's not even the point. It's been marketed from day one as this is a PC. 
Like yeah. you're getting a gaming PC and that's kind of the problem. If you can take the Steam Deck with Linux on it and like l- me as an example, I have like 250 games in my library. I have a ton of games in my Steam library. If I want to play some of those games and they don't work on the Steam Deck, it really wouldn't be ba- that big of a deal except for the fact that I know that I could just put Windows on it and then play all those games. Well, see, the way we, I think that what's going to end up ha- for us, it's not going to be a big deal at all because for us, you can run Windows on your computer and play the games no. there that you want to play. And then your Steam Deck or whatever is just going to have the games that you can play with it natively. That's the way I'm going to do it. Well, I'm, I'm not going to install Windows because I don't. I'm not dumb like you. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not a bloody traitor like you are. Um, <laughs> Dude, I love the way that you said that. That was that was so confident. I love it. I'm not, not, like, I'm not, not going to uh, uh, Sorry, I didn't really mean that. You can use Windows whatever you want. I don't care. Um, no, stick to it. I like it. You fucking traitor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyways. Um, uh, like, like, but for for most people who who have a computer and a and they're gonna have a Steam Deck, when they need to leave the Steam Deck to play a different game, they'll do so. Like, they 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 have mm-hmm. Windows. Probably they're gonna play all their games that don't work on the Steam Deck there, and it's just going to be an added benefit to them that they can play most of their games on the go using their Steam Deck or Steam Deck. Fuck that shit. Um, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so that's the way most people are going to be fine. And that's the reason why I think that there's a good chance that a lot of people are going to stay with Linux. Yes, they're going to have, oh, I know a lot of people are going to stay with Linux, but here's my predict. My prediction is just this, that a lot of people are still going to install windows. On oh, them. it's going to be a lot of people, but I think that I also think that it's going to be harder to install windows on that thing than you probably going to expect. I just have a feeling because I, I mean, you're probably going to have to hook up a keyboard to it in order to, I mean, how, I mean, unless you think that there's going now to be. Now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're definitely right. Cause, Cause gonna, it doesn't have a USB port. So no matter what, you'd have to plug out some kind of dock or something to it. So for the average person, probably not. Well, probably uh, because, uh, cause that. vast majority of people have, don't have USB C, USB thumbsticks, right? So mm-hmm. they're going to have to find some way to get a USB A, th- you know, thumbstick in there or some other way of doing it, right? So they're going to have to do, the, do that that way. So installing Windows is going to be harder than it would be on your computer because your computer has a USB A, you know, port on it somewhere mm-hmm. which you can plug in a thumb drive to. This does most PC users don't aren't like Mac users and have like seventeen USB C dongles just laying around the house, right? Oh. Um. Yeah, so it's 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 gonna be very interesting if if the thing even comes out this year, it would not surprise me yeah. if it gets delayed again. Like it wouldn't oh, surprise no, no. me if it gets delayed again because Steam has done that before. Plus, we're in the middle of a chip shortage. Oh, it's it's Steam, brother. This could be like Half Life, Alex, or Half Life Three. Right. We'll just <laughs> never see it. <laughs> this was all just a scheme to get you to spend five dollars to reserve one, and they really yeah. needed that money or something. <laughs> <laughs> they use that money to like boost the stock price or something. Uh, I I don't think that that's true, but uh, it really wouldn't be surprised if we're if it comes to be October. And it's still not out. No. Like, it wouldn't surprise me. Or if we get to October and just very few people have one, like, it's, like, really, really freaking rare. Um, no. It wouldn't surprise me. All right. So, my last one, which feeds into your first one, is that Discord will see some kind of huge scandal. Whether it's a it's a hack or there's some kind of, like, moderation scandal where, like, there's... Uh, um, you know, a whole bunch of like really bad stuff going on on the platform, and they're having they have to implement a whole bunch of rules to try to, uh, you know, maintain civility. And because I mean, if you've been in part of some of the big ass Discord forums, some of the shit that goes on on in those Discord, I keep calling it a Discord Ooh. forum. I'm like 900 years old. Discord <laughs> server. <laughs> um, <laughs> if, if you're a part of the any of the big Discord servers, there's a lot of just really shady crap that goes on in some of those mm-hmm. channels, and um if that like any of that stuff blows up to the point where it makes it to mainstream media um it wouldn't surprise me if discord is a part of that kind of scandal and that they have to go through and then implement new rules and moderation stuff um because 
Discord's been around for ages, and they just now implemented a way to t- put people in timeout. Like, just now. I didn't even realize they hadn't done that until now. Yeah, and they, well, because you, a lot of servers had timeouts beforehand, but the way they did it was assign roles, right? If you wanted to put somebody in timeout, uh, you'd give them a role that had no permissions, right? Um, that's how you do it. Now there's an actual timeout thing that you can use, but it's just now. Like, it's been around for years, and they just now have done it. So, moderation is better on Discord than it is on YouTube, but it's not saying all that much, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... Um, I think that Discord will just see that because it's getting more popular, right? Like I know you're talking about how um, Element's going to come in and save the day or whatever, but more and more people are using Discord. Like my mother <laughs> asked mm-hmm. me about Discord the other day. Like, mm-hmm. I, like I, I was doing something and she asked me, hey man, what's Discord? And I looked at her and I looked away like, what? Wait, what? You know, you know what Discord is? <laughs> uh, and that's the kind of thing. It's like it's becoming mainstream. Like it used to be just for gamers and like random communities. Now it's going to be for everybody. Like every subreddit on Reddit now has a Discord. You know, yeah. every single yeah. one. Um, and the bigger it gets, the more likely it is we're going to see some kind of scandal that, you know, propels it even further into the mainstream. Well, of course. I mean... The the end goal of Discord is to is for it to morph into Twitter, like that's uh-huh. what'll happen. Yeah, I don't think it's. Dude, could be that. you imagine stories like infinite scrolling <laughs> stories and stuff on Discord? <laughs> well, they, they have threads now, so <laughs> they, uh, like it's yeah, kind, you're right. They, they do keep kind of, and, and so here's all right. Well, there's many problems with Discord. The thing about all these technology companies is that they're freaking copycats. So if Instagram or Snapchat does something and it's uber successful, every other social network has to have that thing. So like Clubhouse was a thing for like five and a half seconds and got like a million users. Um, I don't even know what that was. it, It was an application for like Android or something where they had audio chat rooms like where or something. I I don't know. I didn't join it. I'm not. Dumb. I I mean, it's, it sounds like a way to get uh, catfished from Nigeria or something. I, I don't know. Ooh, awesome. That's my favorite pastime. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. But it, it got really popular for like five minutes, right? So, of course, Spotify had to have a, 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 cha- a Clubhouse clone. Uh, um, Discord had to have one. You know, Facebook had to have one. All the, My problem with Discord was that when Discord first started, they were, I mean... It's chat rooms, so let's hold off on the calling it unique. But they did a really good job of being something that wasn't really around anymore. It was like they they, they took the best things of IRC and chat rooms and like AOL Instant Messenger and kind of put them all together in a single client and made it awesome. And then implemented a voice chat feature where gamers could chat together, right? That's why mm-hmm. Discord was great. But then... They got bigger, and they had to find new features, and it turns out making new features is really hard that are, you know, unique. So, what's the best way to do it? Steal them from Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. Snapchat. That's the way you do it. And that was really disappointing for me, because the, why isn't it possible for you to make a good product that just stays the same? You're like, stop adding... Or, here's the great thing. We don't need monolithic programs. Like, we don't need Facebook to be Instagram, Facebook, or Instagram, Twitter, and all. Like, no, just we separate programs. We do not programs. need Discord to become Emacs. Well, <laughs> well, here's the thing. I don't want my car to be my toaster. Okay? Right, like, exactly. they're two totally separate things. I don't want my chat program to be, like, where I watch my porn in. That's... What? Like, no. That... What are we talking about right. here? Like... <laughs> Discord would have been so much better if they just got good at the thing and then stayed there. You know, stop adding... Uh, add some new features every once in a while when you come up with a good idea, but you don't have to go through and pull pull things like, uh, you know, uh, things from Facebook and things from Snapchat and things from Clubhouse and all this stuff and cram them in. It just makes it way more complicated than it ever needed to be. You know what I mean? And it makes... Mm-hmm. I mean, when when, I, when you first helped me set up my server, you know how much of a hard time I had with permissions, right? Like, mm-hmm. per- permissions on Discord are complicated as fuck. 
Like, mm-hmm. like they're yep. so bad. And, 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 and then ninety percent of the time, you find out that your permissions are still screwed up on channels and stuff. It's you went <sighs> through and set up all that stuff, and I had to have Scraft go through and redo them mm-hmm. <laughs> be- yeah. be- because we missed like half of them. And I and that and every time you set up a new channel or a new text channel or whatever, it has mm-hmm. to be done again. And, and it has this stupid OBS like quality where things change in the background because you know. <laughs> um, reasons so, so i'm sure you set up the, the permissions fine but they changed like a week later <laughs> you know like why <laughs> is this happening like I, I don't need people to see this channel like it's a it's a private channel or whatever it's for whatever uh, you know why did it change it's it was or or they didn't have access to a channel like they couldn't view it or whatever and it's just it's, it's a complete mess fix that stop adding features all right we ended up writing about Discord. Who who the hell would have thought that that would have happened? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gnome gets a week off. Darn. <laughs> uh, oh, I, I could... I mean, I, if you want. I mean, to. we could. We could. We could transition. <laughs> uh, I used Gnome yesterday for a little while. I shot a video. And loved it, as per usual. Well, I mean, it was Papa West version of Gnome, so... Oh, uh, that's... Uh... It counts, yeah. I guess. I don't know. All right, anyway, so kind of. moving on to the apps of the week. We call them apps of the week. They're more like picks of the week. They're more like tips of the week. They're what We don't have a good name for it. What I want to do is steal from Destination Linux. They have picks, tips, and software tricks or something like that. Like, that's <laughs> cool. I'm going to steal that, but I don't want to <laughs> be that guy. Um, so here's our tips. Tri- <laughs> I was going to do it anyways. <laughs> anyways, here's our apps of the week. So Tyler... Um, what free and open source software have you chosen this week for your app of the week? Uh, that wasn't specified <laughs> in the show notes at all. Um, so, but then again, here is my open source uh, piece of software for the week. Edge, look, if you want a Chromium-based browser that ties in with your Microsoft account because reasons, it's good. It's kind of just like Chromium, but but with Microsoft. Hold on a second. I remember, I, I distinctly remember when I made mm-hmm. my video about Edge and I was switching to Edge, I remember getting made so much fun of by someone, I'm not going to name names, Tyler, um, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. that yeah. I was switching to Edge. Like, And I remember you trying it for like 30 seconds on a stream one time, like you tried you were going through and trying different browsers and you installed edge like this is crap and you install it 30 seconds later and yeah. you were making so much fun of matt for switching to edge and now well, here because we are. i literally loaded up edge and i was like this is chromium but the only difference is it asked me for my microsoft account like so i would just like to point out that you were now using edge when you gave me so yes. much shit for it now yeah look i i will defend my position a little bit okay you don't use Microsoft products, much less Windows. So it makes no sense. However, if you're like me and you're going to be an absolute degenerate and use Windows, well then, hey, it ties in with your Microsoft account and it's just Chromium. So, I mean, you you, you weren't wrong too in your video. The vertical tabs thing is nice. I don't like vertical tabs or care for them, so I don't use it. But like... There's no, it's nice that they build that There's in. no browser that does vertical tabs well other than Edge. Like, Firefox has, like, a vertical tabs, like, plug-in. It's janky as fuck, man. It's just so janky. Because uh, I, when I left Edge, because I did leave Edge eventually, I wanted that vertical tag functionality. So I tried to get it in Firefox, and it just, it's just not as good. Um, right now, I'm using Brave for my for my browser. It's okay. Um I hate the fact that in order to earn a dollar a month through their crappy cryptocurrency, I have to get 3,000 ads every day. I mean, <laughs> no, no. I, I mean, eventually I'm just going to get sick of it and turn them off, but I'm very determined to earn some money off from Brave. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. Speaking of that, if you if you use Brave and you want to contribute to the channel with their crappy cryptocurrency, you can now do so by going to our YouTube channel, hitting the contribute button. <laughs> Let me just go ahead and make this clear for anybody who wants to contribute to the podcast that way. Matt doesn't even know how to sell cryptocurrency. So, so. The, the thing is, if you donate via the the, the bat or whatever the hell it's called, I would have no clue what to do with it. <laughs> like, like, like I'm, That's pretty, what I'm, saying. I'm pretty sure that I can sell that through Gemini. Like, it will eventually get transferred to Gemini, or, or maybe I, have to, I don't know. I don't know You're looking I'm, at me like I know. I have no clue. 
Like, I don't know. No idea. Um, I've never messed around right. with that at and all. And I don't think mine had said Vivaldi for the win. I'm banning Disgusting. you. Disgusting. Dis- ban him. Ban him. And th- that's not a browser. That's an office suite. <laughs> mm. I mean, it's, and a terrible one at that. Like, it, it, it has an email client built in. Like, okay. <laughs> okay, I can understand. Maybe the people who like Vivaldi also like Emacs because literally it's Emacs, right? It's, it's built on mm. a Chromium base, but then they went through and built a whole bunch of stuff. I'm surprised it doesn't have games built in. It probably does. Like, <laughs> I, I really do need to remake just a, like a dedicated video because I think I did it in a live stream where I checked out Vivaldi just live. Um, I think it was about five minutes after installing it and having it open that I went, okay, look, all I want to use is the effing br- like browser. Oh, yeah. I want to I want to get to a website. They have some good ideas. Like they their, their customizable UI for their browser is really good. It's really cool. That if you want your your tabs along the bottom. You can do that. You want them along the side, you can do that. You want them along the top, you can do that. You want different colors. You can, if you want your your browser to change colors based on the website you're in, that's kind of cool. Uh, I don't know really know why I need it, but it's cool. But when you go through and add extra things, I mean, and the thing is, <laughs> Edge has been doing this too, like, like lately. I don't know if you noticed that they've gone through and like they, they've added deals. They've gone through now a pay to a pay to. Uh, uh, like a pay to own thing that they now have mm-hmm. built in. And mm-hmm. So they're going through and do this because too. Because we all know it is a scientific fact that browsers are just not bloated enough. Right. Like they just <laughs> the don't thing, have enough features. More stuff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the same thing is just Firefox is doing the damn thing too. Now every time you open up <laughs> Firefox, you get a, 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 a new tab open up that says, hey, try out Mozilla VPN. Like, first of all, fuck you. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I don't like burning my money, but thank you for asking. <laughs> right. If, if I'm going, you literally t- took somebody else's VPN and then reselling it, but you somehow made it worse. So hold off on the VPN. Go back to the drawing table. Do it well. I mean, um, literally, the VPN stuff is the same thing as me taking a Snickers bar and slapping some shitty sticker on top of it and being like, you want to buy this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not called Snickers. It's called Pickers or something, you know? So you yeah. just change me one word in it. <laughs> and it's a terrible font. It's all pixelated. It's oh, yeah. not good. <laughs> no, it doesn't even have, like, the name on uh, on the wrapper. It's just literally, like, a brown paper bag. <laughs> you know, <it's, laughs> uh, for those of you who had bitch about Mozilla in the, in the bingo, you have now learned to square. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, if, if one of if one of our um, uh, uh, great community members wants to create that uh, um, that bingo for us, that'd be awesome, and share that with the community. Yes. That'd be awesome. Um, or me and Scott might work on that after the stream. That's we so good. make a little bingo thing and post it in the Discord. It's <laughs> so good. All right. Anyway, so my pick of the week. I almost forgot that I had a <laughs> me too. I had a one to do. Mine is also for browsers, but mine is for Chromium-based browsers. It would work in Edge, but you wouldn't need it because um, Edge, it's already so good. Edge yeah. Edge does uh, d- downloads properly, like they hide them in a fucking menu, just like Firefox does. But if you use uh, just a a standard version of Chrome or a Chrome-based browser that just basically looks like Chrome, like Brave or on Google Chromium. When you download something, you get this gigantic freaking bar at the bottom. And it's the ugliest thing you've ever seen in your life. It's the worst invention humanity has ever decided that they were going to create. Uh, and it, and the thing is, if you're like me and can't see stuff and often forget to put your glasses on, it happens to me all the time. Um, and you have so that, that means you have to zoom in to see shit, right? The thing is, mm-hmm. the fucking bar gets bigger. <laughs> like, it gets bigger. <laughs> like, every time you zoom in, it gets big, it grows. It's so freaking stupid. So, there's a, there's a, there's a, um, an, an extension called Disable Download Bar, and it works in all Chrome based browsers, just in the Chrome Web Store. Um, and it, it's literally is the only reason why I've been able to continue to use Brave. Like, if not, I would have ran back to Firefox so freaking fast the first time mm-hmm. I had to download anything. Like, and, and the thing, the stupid thing is, like, I would understand if that bar was there, if, like, when you downloaded something big, like, if you downloaded an ISO that's four or five gigabytes large and you need to be able to see the, the progress of it. 
fine. I mean, it's still stupid. I can understand it because at least then you can. There's a reason why. But it, it appears every time like you download an image, like you click on right click on an image to save. Well, really, image. it would be fine if it didn't zoom in with you. Right. Like <laughs> yes. I didn't even know it did that. Like that's the most egregious <laughs> thing. Like the fact that it would ever get bigger. Why does it like, get bigger? It doesn't. It's already huge. It's already massive. <laughs> it's so stupid. All right. <laughs> <laughs> This was the start of the year, guys. This is exactly what you'll expect for the next 52 weeks. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, not 52 weeks anymore, but still. Um, yeah, so that was the Linux cast. If you want to uh, support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Linux cast. Before we go, I should take a moment to thank my patrons, all of these fine people. I'm going to try to get myself out of the habit of reading all of their names. So I apologize if I no longer read your name, but there's... There's 30 of you guys now. <laughs> it, it, wow. It, it, it's becoming... Congrats. It's becoming to the point where I take more time reading the names at the end of my videos than I do actually doing the videos because half the time it takes me like seven tries to read all the names because I get... And, you know, I go, uh, uh, sit, sit, sit a devil on Chris, East Coast Web, you know... You should, you should be very impressed that I have most of them memorized, right? <laughs> but, um, I, you know, I'll get through most of them, and then I'll get to, like, um, now let's go back. To, well, I, I, I always get to Maglin just fine, and then Jackson Knife and Tool pops up, and I just stumble over that name every single time, so I have to start over again. And, and then, like, this, the fourth time, I'll, I'll get through, I'll go... Sid, I dev on Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2's Fun 2, Patrick O'Primus, Primus, Marcus Maglin, Jack Knife Tool. I'll, I'll get past that, and then I'll stumble over CyberGuy Linux's name, or uh, <laughs> Garrick's name, or uh, for whatever reason, I can't say carbon dated. I always call call them carbonated, <laughs> so I always have to go and redo that, too. So, yeah, I, I'm trying to get myself out of the way of actually going through and saying their names. Uh, uh, it was going to happen eventually. Uh, DT goes through and reads like 100 names at the end of his, and he's really good at it. I don't have that capability. I just don't. So, um, yeah, anyways, thanks everybody who does support us on Patreon or YouTube in the YouTube membership. I really do appreciate that. Um, Tyler also has a Patreon uh, that you can go support him at. I don't know what the URL is. I'm sorry, Tyler. It's not nearly as cool. Don't worry about it. Just just go to the shop. We got dope merch like Arco t-shirts and stuff. Yeah, yeah, uh, it yeah, supports show, the podcast. Show that shit, man. You got, it's, uh -huh. it's yeah, on. Come on now. Like, it's like, on, like, yeah. like, 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 let me get these. Headphones it out was of the, way. the the link All to right, the we got some nice dope merch. The link to the store should be in every single video that I do, every single video that Tyler does, every podcast should be should have a link to the store. Um so you should definitely go there and check that out. So that is it for us this time. Coming up next week, we have um let's see, what are, what are we doing next week? Oh, best ways to switch to Linux is is the next topic we're going to be doing so that should be very fun to talk about and if you're interested there are a few things that uh we're gonna be talking about in the future can kd beat gnome is brave a good browser is the linux community bad for linux uh, which is, should be a very entertaining episode uh should, should we do everything in rust and should you use a firewall so those are the things that are all coming up on the uh the the podcast make sure you subscribe and all that nonsense we'll see you next week peace